So I had chapter 15 all filmed, all ready to go, and then I went to edit it, and the footage was corrupted. So now I gotta refilm it. So I have all my camera gear, but I forgot to bring my Bible, and I didn't really want to read it off my phone. So I have my niece's Bible that has all these cool illustrations in it. So Proverbs 15. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. A fool spurns a parent's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. The house of the righteous contains great treasure, but the income of the wicked brings ruin. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, but the hearts of fools are not upright. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue righteousness. Stern discipline awaits anyone who leaves the path, but one who hates correction will die. Death and destruction lie open before the Lord. How much more do human hearts? Mockers resent correction, so they avoid the wise. A happy heart makes a cheerful face, but heartache crushes the spirit. The discerning heart seeks knowledge, but the mouth of a fool feeds on folly. All the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Better is a small serving of vegetables with love than a fattened calf with hatred. A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but one who is patient calms a quarrel. The way of a sluggard is blocked with thorns, but the path of the upright is a highway. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly brings joy to one who has no sense, but whoever has understanding keeps a straight course. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word. The path of life leads upward for the prudent, to keep them from going down the realm of the dead. The Lord tears down the house of the proud, but he sets the widow's boundary stones in place. The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but gracious words are pure in his sight. The greedy bring ruin to their households, but the one who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Light in a messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. Whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord, and humility comes before honor. Proverbs 15. Well, my first commentary was great, but here we go. We're going to do it again. Starting off in verse 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. How important it is for us to forgive. How important it is for us to first extend the hand of peace. If someone has a quarrel, if someone has an argument, for us to have the gentle answer. Otherwise, it's just going to continue boiling over and nobody's going to win. Verse 5 is a great one. A fool spurns a parent's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. How important it is to listen to our, well, obey our parents when we're younger, but then honor and listen to our parents when we're older, because whoever heeds correction shows prudence. Prudence is really taking thought about the future, planning the future, seeing what's ahead so that we don't fall into any traps or, or temptations. Verse 7, the lips of the wise spread knowledge, but the hearts of fools are not upright. It's always so fun to be around wise people because they're always spreading knowledge. They always have something to say. They always have have something to add to the conversation. If you ever have a question, you can ask them and they'll usually have some sort of godly uh, wisdom to add to that conversation. It's just, it's great. The lips of the wise spread knowledge constantly. So we want to be wise so that we can give great counsel as well. We'll let the plane go. Oh, it's a helicopter. Verse 22, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. This is why it's so important to have, like so many virgins put it, the multitude of counselors or many advisors. We can't just try to try to bump through life on our own. It's so important to have those advisors. Business, fitness, spiritual, parent, any any sort of advisor, you can't just figure it out on your own. Why figure it out on your own when someone's already been there and done that and you can 
go to them and ask. Verse 28, once again, sort of dealing with wisdom and replies. Verse 28 says, the heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. It's like when you're around the wicked, they just are constantly gushing evil, whereas the heart of the righteous weighs its answers. We don't just want to blurt out the answer. We don't just want to, we want to set carefully our words before we speak them, so that when we do speak them, it's something worthwhile and helpful, and that we're not just gushing. It's such a, such a great word there. The mouth of the wicked gushes evil, but the heart of the righteous weighs his answers. What are we going to say? Do we weigh our answer? Which one's going to be the best? How can I give the best counsel to this person? It's not just gushing words and gushing evil. And then verse 31, following along in this theme, there's a lot of uh, heeding counsel and how the fools don't heed counsel and how a wise man gives a good word. Verse 31 right here, whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. That's why we're doing this wisdom challenge. We want to be at home among the wise. If we heed that life-giving correction, we too can be at home among the wise. And, and sort of these, these last three verses all go together. 31, 32, and 33. 32 says, those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but whoever heeds correction gains understanding. When we have that godly correction that comes to us and we heed it, then we can gain understanding. And then finishing it off with verse 33, Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord, and humility comes before honor. You can't be honored until you first humble yourself, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We can't gain wisdom until we have feared the Lord. So those are a great three to end on. So welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed the refilming of chapter 15. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and comment what your favorite verse was down below. Hope you're following along with me.